on this video, it shows you step by step on how to repaste, how to change the thermal pads and thickness of the thermal pads, how to replace and clean the cooling fans. It's me again, take that screw out. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing and click that thumbs up icon and notification bell. So if there's a new video coming out, you'll be the first one to be notified. And check the description down below for the equipment and tools I've used in this video, which is available to purchase in Amazon.com in United States and Amazon.co.uk in United Kingdom. Let's begin the tutorial. This card has still the seal intact on the screw so that means all the thermal pads that you will see inside this card is still the stock from the manufacturer the screwdriver that i'm going to use is the wow stick electric screwdriver and the bits is a phillips screw vh1 and also this long screw is an um, ordinary screw which is equivalent to vh1 it's a phillips screw as well here's the option if you want to just to clean the fan, you don't need to unscrew all the screw at the back. All you're going to do is to unscrew four screw, which is located here. You can just access that screw with this kind of screwdriver, a long screw. This one here, one. And then turn the fan blade to get the axis of the second screw here two and same in other side three and four there's the fourth one here so you're going to unscrew that four screw one two three four just to clean the fan in and out of the blades and by doing so you can also remove the fan if you want to replace the fan but only this this side of the fan that is close to the bracket to change this fan you need to unscrew all the screw here at the back because the connector of the fan for this one is linked to the connector that goes to the PCB which is cannot be accessed without removing the heatsink but this fan here the one on the left you can remove that one without removing the heatsink let's start by removing the front shroud so this is the first option so by using with this Phillips screwdriver To have an easy access for to remove the screw you need to turn the blades because there's a there's a gap on this blade here and then same with the other side so all the four screw has been removed one two three four so you can lift the front shroud so this is what I'm talking about this fan the left fan that is close to the bracket here can be totally removed if you want to replace it without removing the heatsink because the connector is just linked from here up to there so that you can just take this apart and you can replace the fan but before you re replace the fan the fan has been attached with three three screw in each fan so you have to remove the screw here one two three and then also the other one one two three so you can remove that one and replace with another one is broken but this fan here on the right side you cannot easily totally remove that one without removing the heatsink why because the connector of this fan that links here 
it joins together to the connector that goes to the this one here to the PCB and the problem is the connector that goes to the PCB is difficult to access to remove the connector without removing the um, I don't know if you could see it but it's squeezed by the heat sink so you, to prevent to get damage I suggest to remove the heat sink first before removing the, the connector that links to the PCB so this one is a problematic if you want to replace it so you need to take out the whole heat sink and then you of, of course if you need to take out a heat sink you also do with a fresh thermal paste as well but this one no problem you can take it off without removing the heat sink so pay attention with that so the connector is three this one is the connector for the fan which is four pin and this two and this two wire here is the connector that drives through the LED lights for the front shroud so that's that's the first option for the fan if you just want to clean the fan just take off that four screw and then you can access like this you can just wipe the blades and even blow the dust of the heat sink yeah you can do that you don't need to remove the screw at the back okay and then this is the second option if you want to replace the thermal pads and the thermal paste if you don't need to clean the fan just to change the thermal pads and the thermal paste all you're going to do is remove this small smaller screw which is nine screw that holds the back plate one two three four five six seven eight nine that goes that holds the back plate and then to remove the heat sink you have to unscrew four big screw one two three four remember the seal of the manufacturer is on this big four screw one of the screw so when you remove that one so you have to void the warranty okay so we're going to do the second option now so i'm going to use the electric screwdriver this is the ph phillips screw one bits So all the nine smaller screws have been removed so you can lift the back plate. By the way the back plate is made of metal so this is very good. And to separate the PCB from the heat sink for to change the thermal pads and to repaste all you're going to do is to remove these four screws so don't forget you will void the warranty to remove this okay so i'm going to do that so all that four big screw are exactly the same size so you can exchange that one so now you can detach the pcb from the heat sink So by removing, detaching this heat sink from the PCB, be careful because there's through wire connector that links from the fan and uh, for the LED. So you're not gonna damage that. Okay, so now you can access the thermal pads and the thermal paste. Okay, next is to show you the thickness of the thermal pads this card is is nearly new so I don't need to take off the connector but I will show you if you want to detach the connector from the PCB I recommend to use a tools special tools like this this is like a plier 
I will put the link in the description down below. You can buy it in Amazon or maybe in eBay. This one is a good, really, really good handy plier to remove this one. Look, look at the tip. It's different. So you can easily remove the fan connector without damaging it. What you're going to do is just to grip this part here like this and lift it up okay same with the big screw and uh, but I'm, I'm not going to do that now on this video because this card is new so it's not necessary you can see it anyway all the parts and uh, thermal pads okay what I'm going to do is to make sure the thermal pads I need to grab my vernier caliper my tools to make sure the thickness of the pads the tools that I'm going to use to make sure the thickness of the thermal pads is called a digital vernier caliper this one you can I put the description down below if you're interested to buy one of these in Amazon so the thermal pads is only few not not much only this part here this is for the these four big square pads here is for the VRAM and this area here is for the VRMs here the smaller chip and this four here is for the VRAM you don't need a big pads for this card the thickness the VRMs is one millimeter And the VRAM, it looks exactly the same thickness. Exactly the same thickness. So the, all the thermal pads on this card are one, one millimeter thickness. So it's so easy to replace, one millimeter. So what I'm going to do next, there's no dust so this card is so clean because it's nearly new so what I'm going to do is just to clean the old residue by the way these tools is you can find this one in Amazon and these are the tools that I've used normally tweezers this one here oh, I got um, more pointy tweezers and I use two different spreader for the thermal paste and a paintbrush to clean the dust and the residue and then to clean the residue from the paste i recommend to use always use a 99.9 percent .9 of isoprofel alcohol don't use 70 percent because it will take time to dissipate the liquid so this one after you rub it it will get dry instantly I show you example and easily clean the residue it melts the paste quickly so now it's wet and just few seconds it's dry so it's more safer to use with the electronic so now it's clean so 
the pads on this one is still new so I don't need to replace them it's still a really really good condition so don't forget 99.9% .9 of isoprofel alcohol I will put the link in the description down below if you're interested and then just for this video the thermal paste that I'm going to use is the SYY thermal paste this is a really good performance thermal paste and also I have also a recommendation for a different brand which is the Noctowa NTH2 or the Arctic MX6 thermal paste which is really good both they are similar with the performance with this one is why why and also there's another uh, there are a few good brands which is good performer as well so this one just for this video so I'm going to use this one to clean the dust in the heat sink you're going to use, you can use either a brush or air blower I also have an air blower which is really really good a powerful one so you can invest one of those but I will not gonna use it on this video because this card is so clean so there's there's no dust on it so always get rid of all the old residue before you put it in a new one make sure to brush the PCB with a um, paintbrush or blow it with the air blower before you put in any paste because there is a very tiny fiber with the cloth that could cause a problem in the long run so you have to clean them so now it's time to put it back together first I'm going to put a thermal paste putting thermal paste don't put it too much don't put it too less just enough so you can just estimate the size of the die just like that because the die size on this GPU is quite small so I recommend that you spread the paste You spread the paste to the edges but you you leave about about one to two millimeter from the edge just close to the edge like that that's perfect and now the pads is in place so so the first thing to do is to make sure all the screw holes of the PCB will be aligned this four screw here so this is the most important these four mounting points here will be aligned on these four holes here because that will holds the heat sink So put it in the first screw. When you screw in, you have to gradually screw in and then in the cross crest pattern. Put this one in, there, and then next two, three, and four. So next would be this one. So you have to screw it in gradually in a crisscross pattern. So one turn here, one turn here. Ok. 
Okay, that's it. So next is to place the back plate. The back plate. So before you go into pull back the back plate, you have to brush it or blow it with the air blower. Make sure it's clean. And this pointy edge here, this area here will goes to the this end of the heat sink. So make sure to align all the screw holes properly. So I'm going to use the electric screwdriver again this time to make it quicker. And then what I'm going to do is to screw here and then I'll do my next screw would be the one which is opposite end. Yeah, so I screw here, 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 here first to make it easier to all the screw will be properly in place. So these nine smaller screw are exactly the same size so uh, you don't need you don't need to worry about misplacing them or I mean exchanging them so next so we've done at the back so what we're going to do is to screw in the front shroud but before you screw in the front shroud make sure to check everything all the connector especially the fan and the LED light connector it's an RGB light by the way so you can control this one with the MSI app so looks okay so screwing in the front shroud screw you have to make sure to turn the fan blades and look for that gap with the blades because this area here doesn't have any gap so you can't do that one you have to turn with in the, in the gap which is could be easy to access so like so so I have to turn the blades on the gap so that's the end of the tutorial if you did enjoy and find this video helpful, please consider subscribing, share this video so it could help others too, and click the thumbs up icon to help this channel to make more helpful tutorial videos like this one. Thank you for watching.